Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to go back to a fascination of mine which is unikernels. This paper we're looking at today was published at the 2019 conference on virtual execution environments and talks about what they call a binary compatible unikernel. And I thought this was a really interesting place in the design space for unikernels. So let's look at what it's all about. Before we get into the details of the paper, let's just look at some background. To start with, what is a unikernel? A unikernel is basically when you link your entire application along with the underlying operating system support that it needs into one static binary that can directly be booted into. And you would typically do this when you're booting into a virtual machine or a hypervisor. And this has a lot of benefits. The first benefit is that your entire application plus OS runs in one single address space. There's no context switching overhead when you make system calls into the kernel and then go back out of the kernel to user space. The whole application along with the OS support runs in ring zero, which is the privileged level. And when you do that, you get several other benefits. First of all, you reduce your attack surface by a lot. So unikernels tend to be much more secure. And the second huge benefit is that they tend to be really small in terms of disk size. And that means they boot up really fast and they usually take much lesser memory than an application running on top of a full OS. So because of these, there's been a lot of interest in using unikernels for cloud deployed applications. But there are several significant barriers to realizing all these advantages. The biggest barrier is that porting an application onto a unikernel is a lot of work. You may have to rewrite large parts of your application to be compatible with your underlying unikernel or library operating system. And if that library OS is in a different language, then you might have to rewrite your entire application in that language. And as is very commonly the case, if all you have is a binary, you don't even have the source code, how are you gonna run that in a unikernel? That is the central problem that the authors in this paper are addressing, hence the name binary compatible unikernel. The unikernel system that the authors describe in this paper can take any arbitrary Linux binary and run it in a unikernel. You don't have to recompile it or relink it or even have access to the source code. And this is what is really interesting about this effort because it really brings the advantages of unikernels to a much, much broader range of applications. This almost sounds too good to be true. So how exactly do they do it? If you look at what it takes to run an arbitrary Linux binary, you basically need to provide two sets of abstractions, load time abstractions and runtime abstractions. The load time abstractions or rules as the authors call it over here, basically mean support for Linux's binary format, which is ELF. And the runtime abstractions consist of everything it takes to support making system calls to the underlying operating system. Together, these two sets of abstractions, the load time abstraction and the runtime abstraction, make up what is known as the Linux ABI, Linux's application binary interface. And the approach of this system, which they call Hermitux, is to emulate the Linux ABI at load time and at runtime while providing the advantages of a unikernel. Providing the load time abstraction, which is basically support for loading an ELF binary into memory and setting its execution off, is at least conceptually pretty straightforward. You just need support for parsing an ELF binary and loading it into memory. But what about the runtime abstractions? What about all those system calls? What the authors here are doing is implementing a Linux-like system call handler within the Hermitux unikernel. What they do is have a runtime system call handler which traps on all system calls 
and system calls are made using a special syscall instruction on the x86. So you trap on that instruction and redirect execution to Hermitux's unikernel implementation of that particular system call. Now you might say, wait a minute, doesn't that mean you'll be re-implementing all of Linux's kernel functionality inside Hermitux? And what the authors are saying is, yes, if you look at all of Linux that has almost 400 system calls, to provide support for all of them would be a huge engineering effort and would essentially mean re-implementing all of that in the unikernel. But what they have observed is that they were able to support 90% of binaries in a standard Linux distro by implementing only about 200 system calls. And to go even further, just to support the applications on which they ran benchmarks for this particular evaluation, their prototype needed to support only 83 system calls. So yes, if you need support for every esoteric system call, that's going to be untenable. But if you look at most mainstream popular applications, databases, language runtimes, and so on, you can support those applications with a small subset of the full 400 system calls that Linux has. And it looks like the authors were able to do this with a relatively modest engineering effort. As they mentioned here, the total lines of code dedicated to the system call layer in Hermitux is only about 3000. So it looks like that in practice, you can still support many real world applications while retaining the advantages of having a small unikernel size. Let's look at some benchmarks and evaluation. If you look at binary size, they're comparing it here with Docker images for a Linux distro or a full Linux distro in, in Ubuntu, which isn't exactly a fair comparison because of course they're much larger and much more general purpose. And of course, a Hermitux unikernel is way, way smaller than that by several orders of magnitude. But even if you look at boot time and turndown time, Hermitux is much faster even compared to other unikernels and container solutions like Docker. And finally, if you look at RAM usage, Hermitux comes in at much smaller than a regular Linux distro, but very comparable to some other unikernel and hypervisor solutions. But the additional dimension we should look at over here is whether these other solutions are binary compatible with Linux or not. These green bars represent things that are binary compatible with Linux, and you can see how Within that category, Hermitux provides much better performance in terms of binary size as well as boot time and RAM usage. If you look at performance benchmarks, you can see that Hermitux is pretty much even with execution on a regular Linux distro. If you want to see something that's very network intensive, they did a benchmark with Redis and Hermitux comes in a little bit slower. I think this is 15 to 18% slower than Linux, but you can attribute that mostly to Linux's highly tuned and battle-tested network stack compared to Hermitux's relatively new and unoptimized network stack. So that was a quick look at Hermitux, which takes arbitrary Linux executables and is able to run them in a unikernel. The way it does that is by emulating the loading of ELF binaries, as well as emulating a subset of Linux's system calls while still staying a small unikernel. This gets over the traditional disadvantage of unikernels, which was that it was very hard to port applications onto unikernels. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.